well, talking about play, uh, managers who play a certain way. We think our favourite coach this season so far probably is Big Ange. Uh, and Poster Cosby you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not that familiar where you can call him Big Ange in my opinion would you call him Big Ange if you went and sat in a press conference I can call him the Antipodean Allardyce <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I, I would love that if you did that I would I would fear for your he's life got a, if you did that you can't, so you're comparing Ange Ball to oh, Sam Allardyce dear go. me you I couldn't would, get you couldn't get any further apart. That is lazy journalism. We, we, we have had the conversation before about your sheer disrespect for what Allardyce you achieved can't, at Bolton. You, 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 are, you, 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 you are not seriously comparing I, Allardyce to Ange Bostogoglu. I Goglu. meant a little bit in their demeanour. The way that the way that Bostogoglu sits at those press conferences, kind of leaning forward on his elbows almost kind of willing, just engaging, but, but you know that there's something coming back your way if you get something wrong as a journalist. And I, I you know, I, I like that about him. I love I yeah, that he, about he, him. He, I mean, he, I mean there, was a, there was a clip in the week, wasn't there, with Moose from Talk Sport, where, I mean, Poster Cogley's quite right to take him on well, over that. There's, yeah, go on. It's almost as if you know what's coming up uh, on this show. Uh, Postacoglo is still wallowing a little bit in some Robbie Williams love after um, Robbie kind of reworded his Angels hit in tribute to him last week. Um, we played that, and this is what Postacoglu had to say about it. On this time, we've had some big name managers, real historic managers down the years. And you have achieved something already that none of them have achieved. No one has ever had a pop song sung about them. Firstly, Robbie Williams, do you know him? Um, have you ever met him? <laughs> and, and what did you think when you heard oh Robbie God. Williams change the lyrics of one of his most famous that's, songs? That's one of the most sort of backhanded, sort of <laughs> underwhelming compliments I've ever had. <laughs> You've had some unbelievably fantastic managers, big names, successful, and then there's you, Ange. You know, so, and, then, and then have I ever heard of Robbie Williams? Where have I been living, mate? I mean, seriously. Uh, look, I, I, I get. Look, I love Robbie Williams. I think he's he's brilliant. He's a great entertainer. Um, I've got a. He made us all brilliant. I think it was it came off the back of one of our supporters. Uh, look, it's 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 great. Um, you know, the alternative is they make up songs about you that are less than complimentary. So, I'll, I'll take it for what it is. But. Um, yeah, thanks for that, mate. I'll I'll, I'll, just, I'll just float out of here. You know, feeling good about myself. <laughs> what is he doing? You Moose? can hear the contempt in Foster Cogger's yeah, voice there, he, he, dripping he, with contempt. Yeah, but, but he's, you know, he, he's quite right. What I mean, what sort of question was that? I like Moose, but what sort of question was that? And, and, and I said to you before about Foster well, got a great answer. There's this, there's this, there's this stereotype um, because he's from Australia that you know. They all live in the outback Australians. I mean, it's you know, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Has he heard of Robbie Williams? I mean, do you know what? Do you know what makes a good question, Chris? The the answer, Mm. and he got a good and he got a good answer. So to me, good question. He got he might not got the answer he expected, but he got a good answer. Now you're a fan of Big Ange, we know that. Have you ever seen him on the back foot? Because he doesn't seem that type of fellow. Um, I mean, well, you know a lot of the Scottish journos. Uh, I think they had a, a deep respect for him, and uh, he. I, I always liked the way he dealt with the, the journalists north of the border. Uh, very much on the front foot. You know, you slip up, he will. He will come for you. The only time I saw him um, really flustered and unsure was. Um, you know when it when it made the decision that he was moving for Tottenham, but he was still at Celtic in that in that last week, the the week before he won the the eventually winning the the treble, won the uh, Scottish Cup. Um, in that week before he was questioned a lot, there were all the links with Tottenham, and he was questioned a lot about it and said, "Well, my focus is only on the game, and you know winning the treble with Celtic. That's all my focus is on." And you'll know that's a, that's yeah. a, that, that that's a sort of a, an easy out for a manager. As soon as Celtic had won the cup. The subsequent day or two after the final, he was looked really uncomfortable because he knew you could see it in his eyes. He he couldn't he couldn't hide it. He knew that he was going to Tottenham there, and and he you know he he couldn't let it out because the deal hadn't been done. But that was the only time I've seen him 
uncertain in a, Th in a press that conference. That is actually one of the hardest situations for a manager to, to be in. And, and most top managers have been in that situation at some point when they know they're, they're moving. They know they're going, but they've still got a couple of games left to fulfil and they can't stand there and tell the truth because that kills the dressing room, room etc. I actually had a manager uh, call me up uh, last season um, to say to me, I've got a problem. Um, you know, I, I am interested in this other job but I can't, and I probably I'm going to go there, but I can't say it. I'm going to be asked about it tomorrow. What's your advice? What, what, should, what should I do? I just said, I was probably just calling sick, telling you, get, 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 get a note from, get a note from your mum. But no, I did, I, did, I, did, I, did, I did say to him, I said, look, you have got three options here. You either don't go, which isn't, you don't go to your press conference. Um, mm. you, you, you lie, which I wouldn't recommend because you eventually you'll get caught out. Or you walk in and say that you're just not going to talk about it. Now, it's a bit rich coming from a, from a journalist to, um, mm. to encourage a manager not to talk about a subject. But this person was, a, you know, I know quite well. And that, that was the only advice I could give him was to go in there and blanket. Because who, who was it? Mm -hmm. oh, I can't remember. Um, he didn't go anyway. <laughs> after, after all <laughs> Well, that, you can say who it go, was then. Go. Now, um, we are a new uh, podcast. We really hope that you are enjoying listening to the show. And I would um, ask one favour. Um, if you're on Spotify, um, please rate us. It's really, really important, good, bad, or indifferent. And if you if you listen to us through Apple Podcast, then please leave a review. And if it's like the one that Banks M20 left us, that would be perfectly okay. He said, I wasn't particularly a great fan of Ladyman's articles, but after <laughs> listening to these podcasts, I've changed my mind. He comes across as being very knowledgeable mm -hmm. and balanced. Really? And um, another uh, listener, LUFC, said, Chris Sutton is spot on as usual. As for Ladyman, well, I'm warming to him. I think I'll take that as a, like, like, yeah. like began's backhanded compliments will do for us, won't they? Yeah, and uh, interesting, you asked for a favour and then you said good, bad or indifferent review it's not no, a favor is it if you get a bad review all do us a favor give us a bad review all feedback is welcome